Since the Pennsylvania Senate debate Tuesday night, Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman's campaign has raised over $2 million. Fetterman's team said some of the money will go toward a new ad featuring his opponent's, quote, extremely radical comments on abortion from the debate. The influx of donations comes after Fetterman's highly criticized debate performance, where he often fumbled his words or lost his train of thought, raising concerns about how well he is actually recovering from his stroke. ABC's Cecilia Vega asked White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre where President Biden stands on Fetterman's health. Let's take a listen. The amount of time that the president has spent with Fetterman and the conversation that is happening today in the wake of last night's debate <clears throat> performance, does the president have any concerns about, has he ever raised uh, either a conversation with you that you've been a part of or, or with others here at the White House? Um, any concerns about his health? So I'll say this, it, um, with the, in personal conversations that the president has had with the lieutenant governor, the president has found him to be impressive, uh, incredibly bright and talented person who's just as capable as always uh, to carry out uh, his office, uh, the duties of his office, as we know he is lieutenant governor currently, and has great ability and heartfelt concern for the people of the Commonwealth. And that is what uh, the president has observed himself. Uh, that is, uh, you know, as, as is the case before and is the case today. President Biden and Vice President Harris will campaign for Fetterman in Philadelphia on Friday. It's a rare occurrence as the two typically don't travel together. Joining us now to discuss is political analyst and senior lecturer on African-American studies at the University of Maryland, Jason Nichols, and senior Blankley Fellow at the Steamboat Institute and Washington editor at The Spectator, Amber Athey. Welcome. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Amber, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, Fetterman has raised a lot of money. He is capitalizing on um, Oz's statement on abortion, which uh, implied that one's local representative should be involved in the decision on whether or not uh, you should terminate a pregnancy as opposed to a decision between you and your doctor. And a, a lot of Democrats have pointed to that as a a, a kind of a, a hinge issue that no matter what you think about his, his debate performance, at the end of the day, protecting the right to choose is so galvanizing and motivating that that can help him to coast through regardless of the effects of his stroke. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's true that abortion is a galvanizing issue for perhaps members of the Democratic base, but polling just simply doesn't reflect the idea that abortion is a top issue for the majority of American voters. We know those things to be um, inflation, the economy, crime, immigration, the list really goes on. And while I know there have been a lot of headlines about this $2 million that Ferdinand has raised, in the grand scheme of the spending that's going on in Pennsylvania, they're expected to spend about $40 million between Fetterman and Oz over the next week. It's really a drop in the bucket. And this late in the race, um, trying to get a good TV ad spot with that $2 million is really not going to pan out for him. Most of the good TV ad spots at this point are actually purchased. And the Democrats are king at blowing money on uh, candidates late in the game that don't really have a good shot at winning. They did this in 2020 with Hagar in Texas, with Sarah Gideon in Maine, with Amy McGrath in Kentucky. So to me, this is really kind of a desperate ploy to make it seem like Fetterman is performing better than he is, but this two million is not going to change the shape of the race. Hmm. Uh, Jason, what are your thoughts? You know, some of us are still processing just how bad that debate performance was, and uh, you know, the like the best thing you could say for it is some people are already voting. <laughs> maybe they're gonna. Maybe they didn't see it. Um, it was it was truly bad. How are you know, how are people who who want Fetterman to win? How are Democrats kind of processing all of this? Well, I think there are there are a few things. First of all, I, I think uh, my counterpart and I would both agree that debates don't really decide elections. We've seen that over and over again. I think throughout the country, we've seen uh, debates where one uh, candidate has outperformed the other and it probably won't make a difference in the long run. The person who I would say lost the debate may actually win uh, the race. So I'm not that concerned about it. And I also would say Pennsylvania ranks ninth in terms uh, of its elderly population. And I think some elderly people may take umbrage to hearing a physician attack his opponent's health, particularly after a stroke. Uh, I think it's also important to say that if we're gonna talk about John Fetterman's physical health, then we should probably talk about Herschel Walker's mental health uh, should be a, a, a bigger part of the discussion. You know, there's no cure for dissociative identity disorder. You can recover from a stroke, 
but you can treat dissociative identity disorder, but it's never cured. And if we're going to judge Fetterman's speech may, and his coherence, maybe we should do the same with Herschel Walker down in Georgia. So I think that, that, that neither of those races will be decided by debate performance or anything of the like. I, I think people know where they stand. A lot of people have already voted, as you stated, Robbie. So um, I, I don't think that that should be the worry. Uh, I think the worry should be where the political headwinds are, and they're against Democrats right now, uh, right now with, with our economy. And I think that's what people should be concerned about, but not this debate performance. I, I, I don't know that a lot of people are going to agree that Herschel Walker has some kind of condition that should preclude him from serving right, can, more can so than spe Fetterman. Spe specific here, I, obviously, it, it, we all are aware, I think, at this point, that now two women have accused Herschel Walker of paying uh, for their abortions, which is in conflict with the stated position on whether or not women should have the right to choose. But can you clarify what you mean about him having a dissociative identity disorder, Jason? Yeah, so uh, a long time ago, it used to be called multiple personalities. And right, you know, now it's called dissociative identity disorder. And it's caused him to, you know, behave in ways uh, that are outside of, you know, legality, as a matter of fact. Um, he is accused of putting a gun to a woman's head. And I think that should be part of our, our conversation. He's accused of saying that he wanted to have a shootout with police. Uh, so all of the thin blue line and the uh, Blue Lives Matter people, somehow that seems to go out of the window. So I think that you know, we should have a discussion about this. Paying for abortions is, is honestly, you know, personally, even though it is hypocritical, it's not something that I should say would preclude somebody from holding office. But putting a gun to a woman's head, uh, having four children and raising none of them while you're going around and talking about the responsibility of black fathers, I think that is uh, something that should be part of the conversation. And again, if we're talking about health, he obviously is a person who struggles with mental health and Fetterman struggles with physical health. And there's probably you have a better chance of recovering from physical health issues than you do from mental health issues. But shouldn't he complete that recovery before he tries to run for Senate? I mean, this is a guy who's clearly struggling. I think at this point it's political malpractice to allow him to get up on that stage when he clearly is not in control of his uh, his mind to speech functions. And if we're going to play whataboutism and compare him to Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker has been very open and honest about mm -hmm. his mental health struggles, whereas the Fetterman campaign keeps uh, keeps lying or obfuscating his health issues. I mean, yeah. let's be honest, before the debate, the Fetterman campaign sent out a memo to reporters suggesting that he wasn't going to lose the debate because of his lack of uh, mental faculties, but because Dr. Oz was a professional TV man. Now, all of a sudden, after the debate, the line from the Fetterman campaign is that Dr. Oz was beating up on a disabled person. So which is it? Is Fetterman disabled or not? So, Amber, so I think I, it, again, mm -hmm. go ahead, Jason. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, so again, I, I think those are, are good questions, Amber, but here's the thing. The doctors that Fetterman has uh, say that his speech and auditory processing are the problem, not his mental faculties. That is the issue with Herschel Walker. He has serious mental faculties that are impaired by having dissociative identity disorder, which caused him to put a gun to a woman's head. And one of the things that I know about conservatives, and I agree with them, is that guns are not toys, they actually kill people. So him threatening a woman's life, I think should be something that precludes somebody from holding office. He's been open about some of it, but he hasn't been open about the fact that he didn't raise his kids, the fact that he, he puts guns to women's head and he's violent with women. They're, he has they're, a also not, running, they're not running against each other, though, right? These are, right. you know, they're different but, but, races. But we, but we're, talking, I mean, we're talking here, and we've been talking about in earlier segments, the implication has been that the Democrats are somehow negligent in putting forward a, a candidate like Fetterman, who, by the way, had a stroke days before the primary. It wasn't as though there was a plan to have a re, uh, someone recovering from a stroke doing a competitive Senate race like this. But if we're going to talk about the negligence of the Democratic Party and all of those kinds of things, what is the Republican Party's excuse for backing a candidate like Herschel Walker, who never at any time, in my opinion, and in many people's opinion, has presented himself as having the knowledge, the experience, or the temperament, or the ethics to really be in that kind of a position? I think it's a lose-lose. I think there's a lot of problems across the board here. But I appreciate both of you joining us for this discussion today. It's been great. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll have more Rising for you right after this.